All right, what's up, guys? A few days ago, I uploaded a video where I went through the Pro Bowl voting uh, process for the offense. Today, I'm back. We're going to do it for the defense today. And I'm just going to ignore special teams because, I'll be honest, I don't want to put the time and effort into doing that right now. So we're going to do just the defensive ballot. I'll go through it. I'll review the selections really quickly at the end. And I'll just be that. I'll be the video. Uh, we're going to start off with defensive ends. And, again, I don't like the newer format they use for Pro Bowl voting. Uh, they changed it maybe two or three years ago. It used to be that you could uh, sort all the players by data. You could be sorted by sacks, by tackles, and force fumbles. Now it kind of just is all boom, right there for you. Not bad, but still not the best. Uh, well, there's one obvious selection here. It's Miles Garrett. To me, Miles Garrett probably, without doing any research off the top of my head, I would say he's probably the defensive player of the year so far. Uh, T.J. Watt's been injured. He's going to miss another game because of COVID protocol. Kind of takes him out of the running, even though he's close in sacks. And actually, he's pretty close in pressures and tackles, too, I believe, to Miles Garrett. But it's hard to do that when you miss three or four games. So, Miles Garrett is an obvious one. After that, it gets kind of interesting. Because you have plenty of other guys up here who really could be deserving of this, uh, this kind of selection this year. Guys also who ordinarily are not in that running. Guys like Max Crosby's up there. Uh, Trey Hendrickson's had a pretty decent year. Uh, Harold Landry definitely, in terms of sack production, has been pretty good this year. It's just an issue of like trying to massage the usual guys who you know are uber talented, but the guys this year who are just having breakout seasons who are also playing at a high level, and they deserve it. I mean, guys like Max Crosby, who I think is leading the NFL in pressures right now, he deserves a nod for the Pro Bowl. He just does, even if he doesn't have to meet necessarily the numbers of a guy like a Nick Bosa or Miles Garrett, someone like that. And speaking of Nick Bosa, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be taking him in a second, uh, elevating, elevating him up because I just – love the way he's played so far this year. And there have been better players, Joey Bosa, than I'm going to look for here in a minute. But Nick Bosa has the sacks. He's got the quarterback pressures. And right now, you know, I think he's one of probably the top five defensive ends in the NFL if we had to put a number on it. But, again, I could go back and look at that and be like, wow, I'm wrong. But off the top of my head – Top five is probably roughly correct for Nick Bosa. We got three so far. I would love to vote Cam Jordan just for old time's sake. I love Cam Jordan, but unfortunately, uh, it's, it's been a bit of a down year for him. I don't think he's going to be making it this year. Oh, let's see everyone else. I guess they, I guess they auto sorted by sacks for the players who are eligible for this category. Uh, interesting. I guess they're going to be classifying a lot of guys who I would usually view as maybe. Well, you know, the issue is I use the classification edge rushers now instead of just defensive ends and outside linebackers. So that's kind of confusing. I'm looking to see now who's actually showing up here. Uh, I guess Joey Bosa is not going to be in this area. That's all right. That's right. In, in the new scheme in Los Angeles, he wouldn't be classified as a defensive end anyways. Uh, Brian Burns, I'm going to go with. He has not been consistently great throughout the year, but he's been fairly good. He's had the high caliber flashes that everyone was expecting from him eventually. Uh, but – no, he's been all right. I think could he have been better? Yeah, I think he still has room for improvement, but he's been very solid this year. I think a uh, selection for him is not not reaching in any way. Uh, who else is up here who I really consider? Yonk Ngakwe is an interesting one because he's been good this year. He has had, since that one really good year in Jacksonville, he's not been nearly the same player, but he's been very good this year. And part, part, part of the reason for that is probably playing on the side Max Crosby, but at the same time, you have to – you can't really separate the two. You just had to kind of evaluate it as it is, and he's been very good so far this year. So I'm going to take Ngakwe. And Trey Henderson, who you mentioned off the bat, is another guy who I, think I just kind of have to take. Uh, that's my last vote. And looking at the other guys, I would have really loved to put uh, John Franklin Myers just because, you know, he's been so good this year and such an improved player. Tanico Autry is another one who I think could get some votes and maybe sneak in there. Uh, those guys are highly underrated. Emmanuel Ogba, by the way, since arriving in Miami, has also been much better than he's been at any point in his career prior to that. So those, those three guys are probably like your dark horses that could get in to the Pro Bowl if the fans of their respective teams just give them enough votes. Moving the defensive tackle. How are they going to break this down? Okay, we got Chris Jones where he belongs in the defensive tackle role. So immediately, two guys have to go, Aaron Donald and Cameron Hayward. They have been by far the best two defensive tackles in the NFL this year. If you're classifying them purely, classifying them purely as defensive tackles, it's those two, and it's not even close after that. So we have to start with those guys. 
I understand that Hayward doesn't have like the sexy sack numbers, but if you look at what he's done with that team, just watch the games. I assure you, Cameron Hayward is one of the two best defensive tackles in the NFL right now. It's not close, like I was saying. Uh, so those two very comfortably up there. Who else do we want to take? Jeffrey Simmons has been living a little bit on the glory of that one really good game. But at the same time, he's also having a pretty solid season. And everyone kind of projected him to make this jump eventually and be one of the better defensive tackles in the NFL. So I don't think it's a stretch to put him in, even if he had a lot of production come from just that one game. Chris Jones, Jonathan Allen, Quinn Williams, DeForest Buckner. I like the whole top line, honestly. If I could take the whole top line along with Cameron Hayward, I would. Uh, I can't. I've got three votes. I've got five players on the top line that I want to all put in. Let me scroll on here for a second to make sure I'm not missing anyone. No, I think I'm all right. Fletcher Cox and Akeem Hicks, by the way. Great Jarrett, too. Having a bit of a rough year uh, by their standards. I don't know. I'm not just going purely off the sack numbers, just in terms of general production. It's been a bit of a down year for them. And Vita Vea, the injuries kind of bounce back and forth. He's a, he's a pro workout player consistently. It's just that availability is sometimes a problem with him. So we're going to focus purely on the guys up top. Uh, I'm going to take Jonathan Allen. I got to take my guy, Jonathan Allen, finally in the Pro Bowl. I was a huge fan of him uh, coming out and what he was doing at defensive end. I thought he was kind of underutilized or misused for a while there in Washington and you now finally in a role where he needs to be. And he's been probably the most productive player along that defensive front for them this entire year. Uh, better than Chase Young when Chase Young was healthy. Better than Montez Sweat. So having him out here, I think, is probably the right move. Hardgrave, Chris Jones. Oh, man. DeForest Buckner is another guy I'm a huge fan of. Quinn Williams. <laughs> it's hard because these guys are all so good, and they're all so deserving that you have to pick just a few of them to get in. I understand it's a pro ball. It's not like an all pro ball, but at the same time, it's tough to draw that line between who deserves it and who doesn't. I'm going to take Hargrave as a former. He's a former Steeler, and he's really flourished well there in Philadelphia at the same time where Fletcher Cox has kind of declined. So I'll take him. I'll take Chris Jones as well, just because I know Chris Jones was misutilized by Kansas City. A lot of his production has come really just from one game uh, this past week, but at the same time, you have to look at it. If he had been at that position the entire year, my God, his numbers would be so much better. It's just that Kansas City was – just oddly stupid about it and put him at defense men when he really – you never should take him outside the interior. So, I'm still taking Chris Jones. Linebacker. Nary, I'm less familiar with this year, if I'm being quite honest with you, because I think there's, there's less dominant linebackers in the NFL right now than there used to be. And that's even going back, like, not that far back, to be honest. Just a couple of years ago, uh, there's less linebackers. Now I look at and say, wow, this is – this is a dominant group. It really has kind of fallen off to some extent. And I'm not saying that guys like Bobby Wagner aren't good anymore. It's just it's not Luke Keekley, Bobby Wagner, Levante Davis. David's been hurt. There's been a bunch of back and forth issues with the guys. Uh, all right, let's see who we have here. Who's available? Fred Warner, Michael Parsons. I'm leaning heavily towards just putting Michael Parsons down immediately. But Eric Hendricks and Mark Davis. Deion Jones, Darius Leonard, worst fumble master right now. CJ Mosley, Patrick Queen. I think that's the only guys we really need to consider is up there. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm taking Darius Leonard. Uh, I know he's not the best in coverage, but in terms of just forcing turnovers and getting involved, he is one of the most freakish guys in the NFL in terms of just being around the ball consistently. And he has that punch down where he's able to knock the ball out so quickly and just force turnovers at any moment throughout the game. And he's always near the ball, like I said. You always consistently have that presence with him. So I'm taking Darius Leonard. He's also one of my favorite players. So I'll, I'll admit it's a bit of a homer pick, but Darius Leonard has to be one of my selections. And if we're taking a look at it, Micah Parsons is really a hybrid guy in the situation because he's played edge so much this year. I would actually think he might do better if you just put him in the edge section, put him as an outside linebacker or defensive end. But they're not going to do that, obviously. Uh, Parsons, to me, I mean, he's been so good as a pass rusher right now. Like, we're not seeing 
like his nine and a half sacks, that's true production. Like that's not him getting lucky on a couple of blitzes. That's him actually getting consistent pressure from a defensive end spot. So him listed as a linebacker, it's a bit unfair, but I'm taking him anyways. I think he deserves it. The other guys out there, I'd love to give Levante David a nod this year, but I just can't. The injuries has not been as consistent this year. Again, I blame the injuries for that. Uh, do they not have Bosu Kermo up here? They haven't listed an outside linebacker. That's going to be difficult. That's going to be rough. But anyways, let's see. Who else is up here? Roquan Smith is a guy I like quite a bit. But again, a little bit back and forth in coverage throughout his career. I'm, I'm never fully bought, on, bought in on him yet. That's not to not Roquan Smith. It's just he's very touch and go at points in times. But looking at who else is left. This is not easy. I don't like it when it's not easy. <laughs> Although I guess it may be in the linebacker spots. Maybe it's maybe I should shouldn't have spoken out. Maybe the linebacker spots is a little more dense than I was initially saying. I'm gonna take Eric Kendricks. Eric Kendricks to me has always been underrated. And I want to give him this nod here. He's a tremendous player in coverage. I think he's highly underrated in coverage, actually. Him and Fred Warner are probably the two best coverage linebackers in the NFL right now. Or at least at least they're up there. They're in that discussion. Uh, the other guys up there. Devondra Campbell has been good this year. I know people aren't going to recognize it, but he's been very good this year to the point where I think he's Pro Bowl caliber. And no, almost no one out of Green Bay is going to know that, but Devondra Campbell has been really, really good for them. And a lot of people were mocking them linebackers in this past draft in 2021 because they thought they needed them. Well, Campbell's been that guy for them this year. So I'm going to put him in. I'm taking Bobby Wagner as well. And it's not just for old time's sake. He's still one of the five or six best linebackers in the NFL. So I don't think it's a stretch to put him in there. Gives us, what, one more spot to pick? Oh, boy. One spot for Roquan Smith, Devin White, Demario Davis, Deion Jones, Fred Warner, Isaiah Simmons. Okay. Yikes. What am I going to do here? Okay. I'm going to say – I'm going to give it to Fred Warner. No, one of the best, like I said, still one of the best coverage linebackers out there. Uh, my backup would have been DeMario Davis and then probably Roquan Smith. You go with the next one. All right, well, the obvious selection, TJ Watt, we can start there. And then we're going to have to start using our thinking caps again, unfortunately. Uh, but, yeah, TJ Watt to me is just, like I said, if healthy, defense player of your candidate. The issue, he's just – between the health issues and the COVID, it's just not there, which is just, like I said, unfortunate because he is that perennial defensive player of the year candidate for Pittsburgh. It's just not going to happen this year because of all the issues. So TJ Watt's the obvious pick. Uh, going off of that, I just helped edit an article for Trench Warfare. I don't know if any of you know about Trench Warfare. It's a newsletter on Substack. It talks about a lot of the best interior or best defense linemen, best offense linemen uh, in the NFL. And I've kind of helped edit some articles for them in the past. Brandon Thorne runs it. He's tremendous. He knows all of this stuff. Trust me. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to offensive and defensive linemen. He just wrote a piece in Roquan Smith. I got to edit the other day. And it's got me pretty convinced that Roquan Smith needs to go to the Pro Bowl. So I'm just going to – oh, Roquan Smith. Robert Quinn, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm saying Roquan Smith again. But Robert Quinn needs to go to the Pro Bowl. Just based on that article alone, he convinced me that this is the right move. So, but Robert Quinn having a huge resurgence season after struggling uh, in Chicago mightily this past year. Joey Bosa doesn't have the huge sack totals, but you look at the numbers, his production is there. He's still one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. So I don't think that's a debate having him in there. I understand people say well, he doesn't have the sack totals. It's more than just the sacks. It's also just the pressures in general and everything going on from there. Speaking of pressures in general, Shaq Bear is a monster at creating those. Even though his sack numbers, again, have not matched his breakout season in 2019, he's up there. So you have to put him in as well. Judon's an interesting case. I want to see who else is down here just before I make any rash decisions. There's Jeremiah wusu I'm taking him. I don't care how much time he's missed or anything like that. If you watched him play, you know it's just the, the level of versatility is just insane. Like another level. I got Miles Jack down here too, even though he's not in that position. <laughs> KJ Wright's down. They got guys down here who should absolutely not be listed. 
in this outside linebacker class because there's this this class is basically this classification is for edge rushers essentially. People are logging in and sort of literally by sack data, by sack data, it's for edge rushers. But if you have a uh, four three outside linebacker like KJ Wright out there, it's not going to matter. Not that KJ Wright would get voted in this year, but I'm just pointing that out. Uh, who else is there? Judon and Landry are both guys who I both like to see get in this year. I understand that they're not maybe the most efficient guys outside of just rushing the passer, but the production has been there this year. They've been that good. And Judon essentially is hugely responsible for what the Patriots have been able to do in the pass rush this year, and that helped in the secondary. The secondary helped in the pass rush. Kind of going back and forth. It's a mutually symbiotic relationship. So that's someone I think needs to go to the Pro Bowl. And that's all my votes. Oh, no. Oh, man. Chandler Jones is still out there. Chandler Jones had that one huge game. It's not really been consistent since then. So I don't feel terrible leaving him off. I do feel bad about uh, Harold Landry. That is one that I think is going to be rough if he gets left out. But not much I can do about it, unfortunately. I'm out of votes. And Son Reich's another guy. Uh, again, I don't have the votes to put those guys through, and I'm not taking JOK out, so deal with it. On the cornerback, I got to speed this up a little bit. I ain't going way too slow, but all right. Immediately, no one actually really jumps out immediately. Hmm. I wasn't, well, no, never mind. Jalen Ranch is down there. <laughs> I lied. Uh, I was expecting someone to pop a little bit quicker. And I know people are going to say Trevon Diggs and all the interceptions and that kind of stuff. I, I get that. But if you look at, like, the yards allowed, and people are going to say, oh, that's overrated. I mean, guys, look, it's a combination of you have to pair together yards allowed and touchdowns allowed versus turnovers forced. And you have to kind of, like, see what adds more value and stuff like that. I don't really know. I have no pure answer for any of that. Uh, but I do know that Trevon Diggs has allowed the most yards and coverage in the NFL in the corners. So, and Anthony Brown's teammates not far behind. That Dallas defense is very tricky in terms of trying to evaluate it. Uh, but yeah, I mean he's allowed, having allowed that much yardage and coverage, it's kind of difficult for me to put. Trevon Diggs is like an easy answer. Now, am I still going to take him? Most likely, I'm still going to take him because. It would just make sense, uh, given all the turnovers he forced. But it's overall defensively not not necessarily a slam dunk for him. It is a pretty good slam dunk for me for Darius Slay and Denzel Ward. Those guys have forced a good number of turnovers this year. Ward recently got an interception on, on uh, Monday Night Football. Darius Slay has a pick six this year. He's really bounced back. He was tremendous in Detroit for two or three years, really dropped off the face of the earth, and now he's back. Uh, Denzel Ward finally having a year with not really a lot of injuries, and he's looking like a pro bowler. So I feel comfortable with those two selections. And, yes, the yardage allowed is a huge deal when it comes to Trevon Diggs. And, frankly, J.C. Jackson is not that much behind him. He still allows a bunch of yards in coverage uh, for for a quote-unquote elite corner, but not nearly as much as Diggs. So I think I'm still going to – I'm going to give – Jackson is a little ahead of Diggs right now. I got two more selections. Steven Howard's not having a good year, even though usually he's a chewing. Uh, where's A.J. Terrell? A.J. Terrell, if you don't know, has been – I mean, he gets a lot of help from the defense he plays in, but A.J. Terrell has been balling this year. He has been one of the best corners in football in terms of just not allowing a lot of yards. Now, he plays in a defense that kind of facilitates that and does a good job of preventing uh, extra yards being allowed, but he has been – really good like among qualified corners like having had enough snaps he's probably towards the top of the list in terms of the least amount of yardage allowed in coverage uh, and then we got one more vote Travis White just tore his ACL unfortunately so he's gonna be done for the year but they are probably gonna take his name off the ballot shortly so I'm not gonna vote for him because it just would be a bit of a wasted vote unfortunately uh, who else? Who else makes sense at this point? Jair Alexander has been hurt. These guys are all. Darius Williams not having an interception this year is kind of crazy to me. But who else? Casey Hayward's been pretty decent in his new role. Hmm. 
Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey is always towards the top of the list, but he's had a bit of an issue. He doesn't have a really good running mate this year, so I'm not sure how how well he's done. <laughs> this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Jerry Skeen's pretty decent. I'll just give it to Diggs. I'll just make it easy. You know, eight, eight interceptions is too much to overlook at some point. The safeties, boom, Derwin James. That's a pretty quick one. Looking much better. Not, not as good as his uh, rookie year, in my opinion, when he was just, like, clearly the best guy on the football field a lot of weekends. He's not at that level, but he is certainly much closer to that than he was at any point since then when he's dealing with all the injuries, all the issues, all the rehab, that kind of stuff. Uh, now he's finally back to close to full health. And we've seen just how dominant he's been uh, in that kind of renewed role. Now they split it up by strong free safeties. So I actually have to remember which ones are which, <laughs> which I don't have to do very often if I'm being quite honest. Let's see. All right, where to go from here? I'm probably going to vote for Harrison. I got six votes for a very small group of guys. I'm probably going to vote Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith is one of my favorite players in the NFL. He's been decent this year. I'm going to vote him. <laughs> That's one vote. Uh, who else is out there? Bud Baker. Not Moment Abram. Definitely not. Jamal Adams, Von Bell. Kareem Jackson's highly underrated, or at least he has been passed. I'm going to take Jordan Poyer. That's an easy one. I'm going to take Tyra Matthew. Another easy one for me. Also because he's one of my favorite players, but hey, we won't mention that part. Uh, oh, who else? I stress way too much over this. <laughs> I'm trying to get this right. Let's see. Two votes. Two votes left. Nah. I'm heck with it. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Uh, Buda Baker. And I'm gonna take Jordan Fuller. <clears throat> Fuller is one of my also one of my favorite players in the NFL. He went to a high school not far away from mine. They actually played in the states one time. We played against them in the states and uh, got our rear ends kicked, mostly because of Jordan Fuller. Which takes us next safety spot, which is pretty obvious right away for me for at least two of them: uh, Kevin Byard, Justin Simmons. Those two guys are always towards the top, and they are going to be again this year. Who else is out there in this time? Micah Hyde is a pretty good bet for me. I'm not going to shade away from that one. Who else? I just got to scroll down to make sure I see everyone first before I throw all my votes away in the first two rows. Minka Fitzpatrick is usually good. He's not been good this year, mostly. He was good this past weekend, but for most of the rest of the year, he has not been that good. Uh, Jesse Bates is having a down year. He was awesome last year. He's not been as good this year. Is it crazy to put Javon Holland in? I mean, he's a rookie, but Javon Holland to me is the guy who's really made a lot of waves already. Uh, yeah, he was one of my – he was a guy I was higher on than most people, I believe, going out of the draft. Who else? So Adrian Omos and John Johnson have both been highly underrated throughout their careers. Uh, I'm going to take – Winf Antoine Winfield's down here. These are too many guys, man. I got one vote left. I think Marcus Williams for one of them. And if I wish I could get John Johnson, Adrian Amos, and Antoine Winfield in. If you could get all three of those guys, I'd be way happy, but I can't. This is the issue. I got to pick one. Oh, no. How do we do this? Hmm. All right. Well, this year I'm going to – Antoine Winfield will have more chances. I'm going to take Adrian Ellis just because he's, he's really underrated. That combination of him and Darnell Savage is one of the best safety duos in the NFL. Adrian Ellis to me has just been historically underrated. But that's my group. I know we're probably going to be upset about leaving Xavier McKinney off. Uh, Devin McCourtney could earn some looks. Each one would feel like get it. But I'm sure Pittsburgh's still a sense of vote making Fitzpatrick anyways. But, hey, you know, not me. Not me. Not me. Not this Steelers fan. So anyways, these, these are the offensive guys I picked. You can go back and look at uh, my past video to see all those, and it would be great if they could load in now, my defensive picks. Any, any second now, they'll show up.
guys. Okay, there we go. Yep, so these are my defensive selections, you can see. Now I'm just gonna scroll down and show you the whole ballot for this side of the ball. It's recording. <laughs> I need to change, I need to get a new computer, or at least I need to get a new battery in my computer. It's five, about five years old now. Uh, lost 22% of my battery just doing this video alone. Not great. All right, well, that's it. That's my video, guys. That's my ballot. You've seen it all now. I'm not doing special teams. I just don't feel like it. So offense and defense are done. You can go check out my other previous video on the offense. I'll probably do a lot more Pro bowl s content as we get close to it. I'm also going to start doing some mock drafts, so keep an eye out for those. But for now, this video has gone on for far too long. I'm going to end it here. See you guys later. Oops, wrong button.